Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Royally Rumbled. This is episode five. And in this episode, we're not only covering Survivor Series 2017, Raw vs. SmackDown Live, but we're also covering NXT TakeOver War Games. I am your host, Jordan. And I'm your other host, Robert. I guess let's roll right into it. Yeah, let's get let's get down to business. War Games. NXT TakeOver. Well, we got that dark match. Yeah. For the United Kingdom Championship, we will see Pete Dunne defend the title against an American, Johnny Gargano. Yeah, not sure what to make of it. Kind of upset that I don't get to watch it because they're both fantastic performers. Yeah, like I've said before, uh, Johnny Gargano is probably my favorite NXT superstar going today. So... I'm glad you mentioned yours up front, because later on we'll discuss mine. Ooh, foreshadowing. A little bit. Um, So, who you got in this match that we don't get to see? As much as I love Johnny Gargano, I think Pete Dunne needs to retain this, because he is from the UK. He's got to carry that title a little bit more. Yeah, I can't imagine them allowing an American to win it, which is why I'm kind of confused as why an American would be able to challenge for it. Um, But yeah, so I would also agree that Pete Dunne should win this match, and I believe he will win this match. Yeah, he's going to keep defending all over the UK. Although I think it's really interesting. uh, Johnny Gargano sent out a tweet. Twitter update! (laughs) Saying six years ago, he became the first American to win the Dragon Gate USA Open the Freedom Gate Championship. Interesting. So, and, and I know he, Johnny Wrestling has been doing some stuff with the Heartbreak Kid Shawn Michaels uh, at the NXT Live events and on Twitter. They're, they're having an ab off <laughs> where Matt Bloom is going to be the judge there. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> but basically the whole story is Johnny Gargano has not been able to find his footing in singles competition since DIY breaking up. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure they're going to play that up. But once again, it's only for the live crowd. Boo. All right. Ring the bell. Which brings us to the first match on the NXT TakeOver War Games special. Live on the WWE Network, uh, we have Lars Sullivan facing off against a man who's been on a winning streak as of late, Cassius Ono. Who you got and why? Uh, I have Ono because he's on a winning streak, so uh, take from that what you will. Yeah, I've actually got Lars Sullivan. Interesting. Uh, I have a feeling like... Since they've been building Cassius up on this winning streak, he's going to put over Lars, and then they're going to start to build Lars uh, to become a contender for the NXT title in the future. I have a feeling this guy is going to be a monster. So, you know, why not? Let's pick up his first win on a, you know, his first takeover. True. Very possible. All right. Ring the bell. Next match is uh, Alistair Black versus Velveteen Dream. Uh, Velveteen Dream. That is his actual superstar name. That is not a nickname that he came up with. That is the superstar's actual performance name, just so you're aware. The Velveteen Dream. That is Patrick Clark. Patrick Clark, yeah. From Tough Enough. Because he couldn't go with that uh, for whatever reason. But hey, he's uh, making this work. Yeah, okay. He's got me He's got me interested in the character, you know? And, and this is something about this feud. It's not about, like, I'm better than you or anything. The whole feud is based around Velveteen Dream wanting Aleister Black to say his name. <laughs> but do you blame Aleister Black for not wanting to? <laughs> no. Because I, I don't. <laughs> no, not really. I kind of wanted to call him Patrick Clark right out of the gate. Um, But like you had said, Johnny Gargano is your favorite NXT performer currently. 
Mine is Alistair Black. Huh. I enjoy watching him kick the living shit out of people. So, with that said, my prediction is Alistair Black. Uh, well, I'm going to have to agree with you. Uh, I think Alistair Black and Velveteen Dream are going to put on a contender for match of the night. I mean, all of the NXT TakeOver matches sound sound good, but mm-hmm. uh, Alistair Black is building towards becoming the new face of NXT. Definitely. And I feel like out of all of the guys that are currently there that are doing anything relevant, he's going to be able to fill the void left by Finn Balor and Shinsuke Nakamura. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I mean, they've definitely built him up. And in, in that way, with those two guys that you mentioned, he's got the entrance and he's got the song. Mm-hmm. So he's the next, like, uh, attraction for NXT, if, if you want to call it that. Yeah. I, so, I agree with that. Yeah. And Velveteen Dream gives me the gold dust vibe. Like the early, early gold dust. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'm like I said I'm digging where that character's going, and hopefully we get some more stuff with him because this is really his first program. Yeah, if early Gold Dust was able to somehow procreate with Jimi Hendrix, you get Velveteen Dream. Book it. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> All right, ring the bell. <laughs> Book it. <laughs> Uh, next match is the fatal four way for Asuka's vacant NXT Women's Championship, featuring uh, Ember Moon versus Carrie Sane versus Nikki Cross versus Peyton Royce. Who you got? I'm thinking Kyrie Sane wins this match. Uh, she's been super impressive throughout the entire May Young Classic. I'm very glad that she won. Uh, she she's basically got a fully developed character and she's fluid in the ring her elbow drop is incredible a couple episodes back i actually mentioned the winner of the may young classic should challenge oscar for the title and we're basically getting that Mm -hmm. so that's pretty cool so i mean why not she won the may young classic now is her time full force Kyrie sane okay i have ember moon because I feel like it's it's her turn. She's been there long enough. You know, she's she's really proved herself worthy in the ring. Her and Asuka on that last takeover was incredible. I think that was SummerSlam? Yeah, but they've tried to kill each other. Yeah. Like, it was amazing. They were really going for it. Mm-hmm. And Ember Moon really impressed me then. So I just, you know... I think that that's who they should put the title on. I, I've got to disagree. I, I don't think Ember Moon should win this match because if she was going to win, it should have been against Asuka. And if she was going to beat Asuka, it should have been at one of the two takeovers where they wrestled. This match is going to forge a new path for all of mm-hmm. the women. Not just all of the women involved in the match, but all of the women in NXT. Definitely. Uh, so, like... That's why I'm thinking let's build towards another Ember Moon one-on-one match and then she can win the belt. You know? No, I understand. Yeah. Uh, the reason so the reason the reason that I'm glad that Ember Moon never actually beat Asuka is because when she eventually makes her way to the main roster, there's a built-in story there. Like right from the get-go. Yeah. She can never get the big one over on Asuka. So you immediately get to plug them into a program and get it to a wider audience on TV. I'd be up for that. Peyton Royce is my dark horse in this match. You know, like okay. her stuff Her stuff with Billy Kay has been so fun. And plus she's the only heel in the match. So I can mm-hmm. see her potentially leaving with the title due to some sort of dusty finish. Yeah, because uh, apparently Billy Kay will be at ringside with her. That's exciting. So. Yeah. I love them. I love them together. More of that. So there's definitely a chance that she gets involved and the heel does heel things and wins the match. Mm-hmm. Nikki Cross is really entertaining too, but like I don't see her winning here. No. So that's why I'm saying let's forge a new path. 
the first person to hold the NXT Women's Championship after Asuka needs to fill some big shoes, and I don't think that Nikki Cross is the right choice at this time. No. She's better to chase it anyway. Yeah. Because if she wins it, then what? Yeah. Ring the bell. Next up, we have the NXT Championship match as the champion Drew McIntyre defends against Andrade Siena Almas with Zelina Vega. Mm -hmm. Who do you got and why? I love Almas. I feel like I've been pretty consistent in saying that every time he's got a match on a takeover. Um, He's one of my favorite guys to watch down there. There's just something about him in the ring that I really enjoy. I don't know if it's uh, the lucha style that he brings or how natural he is and fluid he is all the time. But all that said, uh, I just think Drew McIntyre retains. <laughs> uh, yeah, I agree. I agree with that. I I heard Almas might be done with the company after this. Like, I heard, like, he's really unhappy. There's a chance he, he's not in the game. He's not in 2K18, which made me really sad. I don't understand why. I just because think, like, his whole done. thing has been, like poor timing Mm -hmm. like when he showed up it was at a time when there were a lot of other people showing up Uh uh-huh he got drowned out yep and then they turned him heel and then that didn't work out either they finally like put him with Zelina Vega and I feel like this has been a breath of fresh air Mm -hmm. for him and his career and it's nice to see him in the NXT title picture yeah and I don't want this to be the end of this feud but mm-hmm. I have a feeling like it's going to be. I'm just glad they didn't put him on the main roster because he would have got completely lost. Yeah. He would have been like Heath Slater. Who? Yeah, exactly. But yeah, so I, I say McIntyre retains, uh, and especially if Almas is leaving, I mean. Yeah. I mean, rumored, but no, still. No, I, I understand. Yeah, I, but I, I could see it happening. Yeah. You know? I really enjoyed like Drew McIntyre since he returned and then became NXT champion. Yeah. I just don't see that this is the end of McIntyre's reign because he's only no. held it for like two months. If anything, I feel like Adam Cole is going to be the next one to step into the title picture. Definitely. And then like at the Rumble takeover for Philadelphia, I feel like that would be the time to take the belt off McIntyre. Yeah, and then build towards the takeover for mania yeah with alistair black oh that's what that's where i'm headed with this so we get adam cole versus alistair black for the title hell yeah i'm in i'm in hard all right next up we have the war games match and that is uh the authors of pain and roderick strong versus sanity Versus the Undisputed Era. War Games is insane. And I tweeted it out the other night. But I'm going to reiterate it here. If you're listening. If you've never seen a War Games match. And you have the WWE Network. Go watch one right now. It doesn't matter which one. Just go do it. Just type it in the search bar. War Games. And just watch any of them. It's crazy what these guys do because it's two rings right it's two rings side by side i've never seen a war games match also just so you're aware they don't build the second ring before the match starts so all of the matches previous have a second ring so like are they just going to rotate back and forth like between the matches and use i mean they might do that or they'll just primarily use one ring, but the other ring is just open to be used as another place to go. So, like, there could be some crazy spots in some of these other matches due to that other ring. Yeah, especially that women's four-way. Yeah. And that's something that had happened every time they did a War Games match. <laughs> so, here, here are the rules, Okay. It's nine superstars, two rings, one cage. (laughs) Uh, Each team picks one member to start inside the cage. And while the other members are locked in shark cages on the entrance ramp. 
uh, the match starts. After five minutes, the final two members of one team enter, giving that team a brief numbers advantage. Three minutes later, a second team uh, is released, followed by the third team three minutes after that. Once all nine are in, it's one fall to a finish. So it so it's a it starts off as a triple threat match inside of a double long cage in two rings. And then so let's so let's let's walk the well, let's walk through this, okay? Pick a guy from any of the teams to be in there first. It doesn't really matter, right? If you're booking this, do you let Authors of Pain get that first rush or do you have them be the last team and clean house so here's the thing uh, <laughs> Roderick Strong cut a promo the other day where he was saying how he doesn't want to be partnered with the authors of pain and he doesn't even know if he could trust the authors of pain mm -hmm. William Regal just literally threw him in the mix with this Yeah, he, he, he was, just wants to get his hands on the Undisputed Era right so I think if the Authors of Pain were to be released, like the numbers game are in their favor, but then Roderick Strong could very well like start fighting with the Authors of Pain. You know, so that's something that I was thinking about in the back of my head. So what I imagine happening is that because he cut that promo, Authors of Pain put him in first. And then let's say Undisputed Era gets released first. And they beat Roderick Strong down on top of the other two guys that are in the ring. And so then Undisputed Air is first. And then you release Sanity. And you let that all clear itself up. Because they're all going to be fighting each other like crazy. And then you release uh, what a, what a, a common Rezar, right? Yeah. You, <laughs> then you release them as the final two. They're fresh. They're strong. And everybody else has been beaten down already. And they just absolutely clean house. And then it's one fall to a finish. So then you get your uh, your Adam Coles and you're you know, kicking out of stuff that they shouldn't be kicking out of. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or Authors of Pain grabbing guys and tossing them from the center of one ring into the other one. Like that kind of stuff. It's going to be absolute pandemonium. Dude, I can't wait. I can't wait. It's going to be fun. That's That's for sure. All that said, who you got? <laughs> I've got to go with the Undisputed Era for this. Okay. I think they're going to pull out the victory because they're still fresh as a team. True. So I'm going with Undisputed Era. Okay. I have, you have? Uh, I have, and I know a few episodes ago, I said I'm not into the Authors of Pain, and I'm really not. Um, but in this type of match, it benefits them more than anybody else. So I'm going with Authors of Pain and Roderick Strong. Hmm. And even if they use him as a weapon, <laughs> I can't do I can't wait. I mean, you figure though, like two of the guys on sanity are pretty big. Yeah. Like Alexander Wolf and Killian Dane. Yeah. Those two dudes are, are bigger guys. Yeah. But I guess, I guess in my head, it's, uh, authors of pain have the reputation, you know, yeah, for full true. blown beat for full, full blown beat downs. And numbers, advantages, and that kind of thing. So, I'm really excited for it. Really, really excited for it. It's gonna be nuts. And it, the only thing, the only thing that really sucks, in my opinion, is just my opinion, is that nobody's gonna bleed. Yep. Because unless that something was... goes horribly wrong. So let's pray for that then. Let's because not. Because War Games, that's... War Games was notorious for just total bloodshed. <laughs> And when, you know, and if WWE is going back to WCW and, and dusting off some old stuff, let's get the uh, the the three tower caged going where David Arquette won his title. <laughs> Things not to do. <laughs> it was a three story cage, dude. <laughs> well, with that, that wraps up our NXT TakeOver War Games predictions. So... This gets us into uh, Sunday night, Survivor Series 2017, Raw versus SmackDown Live. The only night where Raw faces off with SmackDown, head-to-head, -head. the one night a year where they compete against one another. 
in head-to-head competition. Is this the only time, or did they do this some other time? The only time during the wow. year where SmackDown and Raw compete. Head-to-head? Head-to-head in matches. For brand supremacy? If only Michael Cole had said that one or two more times on Tuesday. Yep. If only. It's just... Ugh. Ugh. All right. He couldn't say that enough, man. I Awful. Awful. So, but before we get to that, we got to get to the kickoff match on the pre-show. Woo! Uh, the only match on the pre-show and the only match on the entire card where a championship is on the line. Yeah, and the only one that's not uh, an inter-brand promotional match. So we got the Cruiserweight Championship match where Enzo Amore defends against Kalisto. Who do you got and why? Well, uh, so I'll just say this. Uh, Enzo's heel work is great. Uh, and I'm, I've been say, we've been saying uh, this is three episodes straight now, I believe. Enzo's heel work is great. He's completely natural in that role. Uh, and he's also been wearing black f- all the time since he's turned heel. It's fantastic. In my opinion... Kalisto is really uninteresting, so I'm going to stick with what I said last episode, and Enzo's going to ride this out for a while. Enzo wins. Okay. I think Enzo Amore is going to win as well. Heel Enzo has been on a roll, and he makes a much better champion than Kalisto, and I think we're finally going to get Enzo versus Mustafa Ali next. Yeah, and, and they've been doing some interesting stuff with Enzo and Drew Gulak. Yes. Uh, I want to see and, more. Uh, the Zo train. Yeah. Dude, he's Gulak's really funny. Yeah. And that's definitely not something that I would have considered during the Cruiserweight Classic. So no, good on him. He was like one of the most serious competitors yeah. in that whole thing. Yeah. And I I know we talked and I don't want to keep like retracing over old stuff, but they completely pissed away the good fortune that the Cruiserweight Classic gave them. But that's neither here nor there. Yeah. Uh cuz it's uh it's a total like people don't even care no and it was great it's great to put enzo in there well enzo i care, feel like but... enzo's the only one who's holding that division together at the t- at the moment yeah yeah man like if enzo yeah. wasn't there they'd probably just would... disband it yeah. yeah that would be it so enzo amore the zo train keeps on chugging jadunzo <laughs> I love the name of that fucking move. Oh, it's fantastic. Start the show. All right. All right, let's 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 go with the first champion versus champion match, but it's also non-title. None of these, None of these matches are for titles. Are for, it's for brand supremacy. It's the one night a year when oh. Raw <laughs> and SmackDown go head-to-head in competition. So we've Interesting. got... Interesting. So we've got the Intercontinental Champion versus the United States Champion. We have The Miz versus Baron Corbin. Interesting. I like this match a lot. I like I'm this really, match on Twitter. I'm, I'm really, really interested in this match. Um, the kick in the ass that they gave Corbin at SummerSlam appears to have worked. Uh, he's a really compelling worker. And I'm legitimately interested in his character. Uh, he and Miz have traded barbs via social media and is really entertaining. You know, uh, the, the, the shit talking that they're doing back and forth to each other is hilarious. Miz is much better at it, but Corbin's also much more scary when he delivers it. If he's doing it off the top of his head and not reading a promo. Miz still tops my my board with mic consistency, with the exception of Raw this past week, because he stumbled like two or three times, and it was very, very out of character for him. Yeah, he, uh, I don't know, he was off his game. It was very weird. Like, he needs some momentum, because he just has to deal with The Shield and, like, Braun Strowman. So, Mm -hmm. at least SmackDown has built up Baron Corbin. Yes. To make him, like, a focal point. I still don't like his new music, but that's not... Oh, I hate it, but yeah. The Twitter promos have been good. Yeah. 
Yeah, they have been. They've been really good. And I don't think this match is going to be anything special. No. I'm hoping the Miz Taraj gets involved. Um, Most likely. Or Corbin takes them all out. And it's weird because it's a, it's a heel versus heel match. Yeah, well, that and Raw doesn't have... Raw has like two faces. Yeah. So... <laughs> Uh, so, I have I have Corbin to win. Okay, I have the Miz. But I have a disclaimer. Go on. If Miz wins this match, I believe Miz will be the only person from Raw to win a match. Huh. Because imagine that promo. Mike, Mike the Miz carrying Raw on his back, the only Raw superstar to do his job. So I have Corbin because I think Corbin's going to win and I think it does more for Corbin to win than it would for Miz. But if Miz wins, he's going to be the only guy from Raw to defend Raw. Okay. I like that. I have the Miz because, like I said, he needs momentum. So let's give him some momentum because he could only talk for so long before people start to get bored. Oh, I agree. I agree. The, this past Monday, he did a he. There was a great when my hand goes up, your mouth goes shut. It was fantastic. Yeah, because they were killing Sheamus. It was great. Speaking of Sheamus, we'll just roll right into that one. Okay. Uh, the tag team champions from Raw versus the tag team champions from SmackDown. The Bar, Sheamus and Cesaro versus the Usos, Jimmy and Jay. Who you got? Um, the Usos deserve this. Uh, they've been killing it every night that they go out there. They kill it. Not to say Cesaro and Sheamus haven't been, and they're going to put on a good match, but the Usos have so much more momentum. Definitely. So it goes back to us talking about the momentum thing. SmackDown Live has been building their tag champs, whereas Cesaro and Sheamus haven't really won a clean match in a while mm -hmm. they were starting off good when they were doing the whole thing with the hardys but yeah. as soon as they dropped those belts to rollins and ambrose they kind of twisted in the wind yeah and then when they lost their rematch it was just kind of like eh. it was funny uh on smackdown live when the usos came out and cut their promo which was a it was a good promo M amanda my wife had said to me uh th that was really weird and i don't think i liked it and i was like why she's like i don't know it just wasn't very good it was so strange and i said well it's probably because the guys that they were talking to weren't there <laughs> true so it, it came across as a very strange promo if you haven't been like following along but otherwise i mean it was i thought it was a good promo yeah and the usos like you said have been killing it we talked about it the last time we did a SmackDown pay-per-view show where the the heel turn for them has completely revitalized their careers. I'm a little upset that we're not getting the Usos versus Rollins and Ambrose because I think I would have been way more invested in that match. Yes. However, yes. I love Sheamus and Cesaro. Yes. And these guys are all going to try and steal the show and they're going to kick the shit out of each other. This match will be good. It'll probably be great. Yeah. But but Raw changing champs so late gave this no momentum. Yeah. So I'm just mildly interested in it. So, uh, but I do agree with your assessment. I do also have the Usos down as the winner. And speaking of changing championships, <laughs> uh, let's talk about the Raw Women's Champion versus the SmackDown Women's Champion. Alexa Bliss versus Natalia... Wait, no, it's not Natalia anymore. Charlotte Flair. And now I'm 3,000% more interested. Yep. Uh, so Charlotte and Natty actually had a very good match on SmackDown last night. They did. It uh, was leaps and bounds better than their last match. They've. I saw uh, Max Landis on Twitter say they've come such a long way from talking about which family member is more successful. Mm-hmm. And mm -hmm. they have. They've forged they have. their own path. I don't put that on either performer, though. No. That's a creative blunder, to say the least. But it's just funny because of where they were, like, two years ago having matches. 
to where yeah. they are now right. and the platform and the way that they put the match together, it was so much better than where it was. So, and I think a lot of some of some of that has to do with uh, Charlotte understands her character more now. Yes, you know she's so much more confident now than she was then. Um, and I'm really, I really enjoy face Charlotte. Yeah, I'll me just too. Put it out there. Me too. I don't like Charlotte as a heel. I know Rick is the heel, but you know she has to forge her own path, and maybe it's as maybe it's a fan favorite flair. Because I mean, Rick was always a heel, but everybody always cheered him anyway. So. Yeah, but that's neither here nor there. I'm so glad that Maddie Natty's not in this match. This match should be great. Alexa Bliss is fantastic. They're both at the top of their game. They're both in their prime. But on the heels of the ESPN 30 for 30 about Ric Flair, uh, the book that they released, and that great moment Tuesday night when she won the title back, I've got to say Charlotte's winning this. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I think Charlotte is going to win. If you saw at the very end of SmackDown, Raw invaded. Raw yes. put SmackDown under siege. And Alexa Bliss actually hit Charlotte with her title. Mm -hmm. at the end so face charlotte i feel like is gonna win this match uh i feel like they're gonna have a good match and i could totally see charlotte winning except here's my butt alexa's gonna attack post-match alexa's sure. gonna beat her down because alexa's gonna gotta keep some of her heat yeah yeah so it's perfect and that's like, fine i don't see this match ending that's a win-win for both of Clean? them. Clean, yeah. I I could see maybe Charlotte rolls her up. Alexa Dude, when, throws a tantrum. When Charlotte when Charlotte locked in the figure eight on Natty Tuesday, I was like, oh my god, Charlotte's winning this. I had I had said it on Twitter, like I tweeted it out. I was like, I have a feeling we're getting a new women's champion. I just got a feeling. Yeah. And then when she locked that in, I was like, it's over. She's a dead center in the middle of the ring. Yep. And the match had already gone on so long that once that got locked in, there was such a finality to it. And Natty wasn't squirming or anything. I was like, dude, she's tapping out. She's tapping out. And then she did. And I was like, I was actually super invested in that women's match. They actually did it. Yeah. You know? No, Because a lot of times, good. and a lot of times, and I don't think it's the performer's fault, but they don't do enough work story-wise to make me care no but there's been so much flair stuff recently that when i see charlotte and you're able to cheer her because she's not telling you to shut up and bow down to her yeah uh, between the espn you... special and her book yeah. and the blog posts and everyone even rick flair's health scare yeah you know all of that has flair at the top of mind and now she's She's faced, so you could actually, like... Get behind it. Now, now you want to see it. Now you want to get behind it. So yeah. I'm really happy about it. Really happy about it. So I see Alexa attacking Charlotte post-match. And then I see Carmella coming in and cashing in Money in the Bank. Ooh. And beating Charlotte. And becoming the new champion. Because now she no longer has Ellsworth with her. So... Ooh. Yeah, he got released today. Yeah. Let's talk about that dude in in a second. But but I, I have a feeling like Charlotte's going to win the match. Carmella's going to cash in. And then that starts Charlotte with the chase yet again. <laughs> I, would, I would agree with that. But I don't think that that's happening on this show. Yeah. Not yet. And I know Carmella's had the money in the bank for a while. I'm still saying not yet. Because there's something else that's going to happen. Like, there's so much that's going to happen at Survivor Series that would completely get lost. Completely get lost that she cashed in. Not if that goes on before Brock AJ. I'm telling you. I'm just, I'm just saying. That's my. I guess. agree. It would be, it would be interesting. And it, and I and I like the idea. If I were to do it, that's when I would do it. I'm saying wait till the next one. But I understand why you're saying that. But I, there's other stuff 
that's going to happen in these next couple matches, that that would completely be lost. Let's talk about Ellsworth, just briefly. I just want to touch on it. So the guy's an indie wrestler, and I just want to say, like, bravo, because he... <laughs> He came in for a one-night appearance against Braun Strowman and got a year-plus-long contract. You yeah, know? A, a year and a few months because it was right after the uh, draft, the initial draft. Yeah. When, Braun, when they were trying to put Braun over by wrestling enhancement talents. And Ellsworth came in and he had that interview in the ring, those weird, awkward in-ring interviews before the match. And he got over immediately. James Ellsworth has done something that not everyone on the current roster is able to do. He got over. And it, you know, it paid off. And the guy, I have all the respect in the world for him. He did everything oh, that yeah. was asked of him. He wrestled AJ Styles for the WWE <laughs> Championship. <laughs> he almost won the title. He dude. almost won the title. He's beaten Amazing. AJ Styles. Yeah. He eliminated Braun Strowman from last year's Survivor Series match. Yep. He he had his entrance at WrestleMania. He's got an yeah. action figure that's almost coming out pretty soon. I just I wish the guy nothing but the best of luck. He's he's Mr. Glenn Burney himself. Yeah, man. Glenn Burney Maryland. Shout out. That is that is the man right there. That's awesome. I mean it's such a great story. Yeah. So, you know, I, he, I he, he leveraged he, well. he leveraged a crowd reaction into a year plus contract. You know, that's amazing. Yeah. And he did great with it. He had fun. He got to do what he wanted to do. He got to meet crazy amounts of people. Yeah. So Ellsworth, if you're listening, charge as much as you want on the indie circuit, dude. And ask people, you know, for creative control of your of your booking. Book yourself to lose everywhere. Just use it now. You got it. It's it. All right. Uh, I guess let's get into the women's five-on-five -five traditional Survivor Series elimination match. Okay. Team Raw, led by Alicia Fox versus mm -hmm. Nia Jax, Bailey, Sasha Banks, and Asuka versus... Team SmackDown Live, led by Becky Lynch, Carmella, Naomi, Tamina, and now a vacant open spot on the team. Who do you think fills it? I think the final member should be Natalia. Because do for you? her to just lose the belt and then just completely stay off Survivor Series, I think that's wrong. I think it should be Natalia. What about you? What return was heavily rumored Monday but didn't happen? Yeah, but I don't want Paige. I don't want Paige on SmackDown. Let's keep her on Raw. She'd be better suited on SmackDown. I disagree. Because she would elevate that that roster of women's wrestlers. But what does she do? She comes in and what? And feuds with Charlotte with for the belt? Sure. Feuds with Becky. But we've feuds seen with those Carmella. things. Feuds with Naomi. Feuds with Tamina. It doesn't, it, it doesn't matter. She's... Raw's set up with who they've got in their women's division. See, because I can There's... see Paige coming back and just staring down Alexa Bliss for the title, and then that's all that you need. And then you have Paige scream, this is my house, and that's... There's your feud. I don't know. I think I think she comes back and she fills that spot vacated by Charlotte. That's the only reason... Because if Natty was going to just take the spot, I feel like they would have announced it already. Why would you leave it open this long? Unless They're Nikki moving... Bella comes back, because that was my other. I don't think thought. So. I don't think. I think she. I think she's finished. Honestly, I really do. I think she's finished. But I definitely think that Paige comes back and joins the SmackDown team, which would be another uh, huge get for Shane McMahon and Daniel Bryan. So they could lord that over Raw as well. They got John Cena to join their team. They get Paige to join, the, you know, that kind of thing. Alicia Fox sucks. <laughs> Raw's team is better. Even if you put Paige on SmackDown's team, Raw's team is better. Yeah. And I'm going with Raw's team because Asuka can't lose. Yeah, I think Asuka's going to be the sole survivor on Raw. 
Oh man, that'd be so. Good. I think it's gonna come down to so Oscar good. versus maybe like three members of SmackDown Live, and she just takes each and every one of them out, almost yeah. effortlessly. Yeah, I would love to see Oscar versus Naomi. Yeah. Oscar versus Becky Lynch too. Becky tries to do the uh, disarmor, and Oscar slips out of it and throws her in an Oscar lock. And that's the end of that match. Yeah. That'd be awesome. All for it. But I say Raw. You say Raw as well? Yep. Fantastic. I guess this transitions into the other five-on-five traditional Survivor Series elimination match. The old, old men. (laughs) Team Raw, uh, led by Kurt Angle, is Kurt Braun Strowman. Finn Balor, Samoa Joe, and Triple H versus the SmackDown Live team led by Shane McMahon that features Shane, Randy Orton, Bobby Roode, Shinsuke Nakamura, and John Cena. This might collectively be the oldest group of guys to ever wrestle a 5-on-5 Survivor Series match. It's gotta be. This match is gonna be super fun. Hell yeah. Uh, I just don't want this to be all about Triple H. (laughs) since he was randomly included at the last minute but that's what's happening that's what's happening Mm -hmm. he's inserting himself into them we've seen this happen so many times so i'm gonna break this down before i i name who i think is gonna win so i I have a feeling like finn balor and samoa joe is gonna lead to balor getting eliminated because they can't get on the same page they can't cooperate they and cooperated well as a to... tag match, as a tag team the other night on I Raw. I understand. It was great. But in the heat of the moment, they're going to build. They keep saying, Finn Balor and Samoa Joe can't get along. They don't like each other. They're going to, something's going to happen, and it's going to lead to Joe kicking Balor in the head, and then Balor gets eliminated. I have a feeling like Shane is going to do something crazy, and it's going to get Strowman eliminated. Or Kane shows up and eliminates Strowman. Mm-hmm. Triple H is going to eliminate Kurt Angle, leading to a match at WrestleMania between the two. I don't want to see that, but that's what's going to happen. That's such a waste. I know. But Survivor, Se- Survivor Series is always step one to WrestleMania, so yeah. Yeah. So, I see this coming down to Samoa Joe for Raw, and either John Cena or Bobby Roode. And I think Samoa Joe's going to go over and pull out the win for Team Raw. Okay. Finn Balor and Nakamura are going to do some fun stuff together in this match. But also, do you think Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens interfere and cost SmackDown the match? Yes. I'll also throw another uh, weird question like that. Does Jason Jordan come out? Ooh. And cost somebody on Team Raw something? That would be great. Because uh, I, what I imagine happening is both teams have mutiny where Sammy and Kevin come out and beat down the SmackDown team and Jason Jordan at least gets Triple H eliminated. Dude, what if we get Jason Jordan versus Triple H at WrestleMania? All for it. Sign me up right now. Because what I'm tired of is seeing two really old guys go at it and neither of them have the stamina to do it anymore. And I'm not saying Triple H doesn't have the stamina, and I'm not saying Kurt Angle doesn't have the stamina. I'm saying I don't want to see the dinosaurs wrestle each other. I want to see them wrestle the young guys and put their names on the line for the young talent. I also just want to point out, John Cena was notably absent when SmackDown got under siege on Tuesday. Well, because he's got better things to do. Oh no, I'm aware. I just, you know, how does the team on SmackDown not, you know, point that out to him. What if John Cena's, like, music hits and he just doesn't come out? Shane Shane got roughed up pretty bad. And, uh, where was Super Cena, you know? (laughs) There should be dissension among the SmackDown team that Cena wasn't there to help save them. Where were you? You joined the team. Where were you? Yeah, should be the thing that they say to him as soon as they see him at the pay-per-view 
in one of the backstage segments that you know we're going to get. What I really want to see in the ring for at least three minutes is Angle versus Nakamura and Triple H versus Bobby Roode. And I will be completely happy as long as one of the next five guys I list is the winner of the match. Strowman, Finn, Joe, Nakamura, or Roode. If it's anybody else getting that final victory, the match is a piece of shit in my opinion. And with that said, I'm going to say Raw wins. Okay, so we both have Raw. Yeah. Interesting. Because Braun Strowman is such a game changer. <laughs> yeah. Nobody on... He's the only one like that in this match. It's not like you've got like Big Show or nope. Kane on the other team. There's nobody leveling that out. There's nobody but, leveling that out. But, like I'm saying, I'm thinking Kane might play a factor in getting Strowman eliminated. Yeah, I mean, there's a chance that if you go with Kevin and Sammy doing SmackDown in, Kane and Jason Jordan, not as a team, but separately doing Raw yeah. in, you know? This match will be fun. It'll be fun. It's going to be crazy, but it's going to be fun. Yeah. So we've got... Another match that's not for a title, but it is a match where Raw and SmackDown go head-to-head. One time a year that this happens, Jordan, and it is Sunday at Survivor Series. Because this is they're not going to cross over like this again, if I I understand the rules correctly. It's the one One time a year. year. Got it. So representing Raw in this match, we're getting Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, and Dean Ambrose. The Shield, the Shield is back Again. versus the New Day, Biggie, Kofi Kingston, and Xavier Woods representing SmackDown Live. This this is my match of the night. Really? Yep. Shit. Match of the night. Uh, in my opinion, it has the makings of an instant classic. Every single superstar in this match is in the prime of their career. Every one of them. And if I recall this correctly, they've never crossed paths uh, during the Shield's first run. No, because they weren't a thing yet. They weren't a thing yet, or they were just becoming a thing. So it's the first time that these two have ever, these two teams have ever faced each other. I'm such a big fan of both teams, I can't wait to see what happens. I really can't. I think it's interesting that the New Day have been saying... That they've never once bickered or turned on one another. So I've got a bad feeling that there's going to be some miscommunication and that's going to cost them the match. Okay. So you're going with the Shield? Yeah, I'm going with the Shield. I say New Day wins. Wow. Yeah. This is interesting. Yeah. There's a lot of interesting factors Yeah. in this match. I, I just... Because they... They they also had a really good promo Tuesday, New Day. The New Day pointed out they have 20, 27 championships, I think they said, between all three of them. And then they were quick to uh, relay that they were mostly Kofi. <laughs> it was a really funny moment. They yeah, were like, we got good. 27 championships between the three of us. And then Xavier was like, it was mostly Kofi. And Big E goes, yeah, he's, he, he's awesome. He was really awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that was fantastic Kofi just kind of shrugs yeah and he was like true true but <laughs> that was that was that was phenomenal i don't think it's gonna be match of the night but no no i think dude i think it is like there's no way that i guess just because i haven't really thought about it because this that, just kind of came together this, this did just come too. together and it, the weird thing is that we pointed out earlier that some of the matches that just got thrown together aren't interesting because there's no momentum but some of these are immediate, like immediate sells. This will be a good match, but I'm not invested. Right, but I'm way more invested in this than I am in the tag team match. Yeah. Just on name value alone. I'm way more interested in seeing the Shield versus the New Day. Well, don't forget this is also the first time we're actually getting the Shield back together. Right. And in our last episode, we had talked about it, and then everybody got sick. <laughs> I feel like this will be the match... Everybody's going to talk about, oh, that was cool, that was cool, that was cool. This is going to be the match everybody talks about. Speaking of matches that everyone talks about, this is going to be my match of the night. 
you as think? we're getting the Universal Champion versus the WWE Champion for the first time ever. And probably the last time ever. <laughs> where Raw and SmackDown go head-to-head in one-on-one competition for brand supremacy. As the Universal Champion, Brock Lesnar goes one-on-one with a WWE champion, AJ Styles. Phenomenal. There was no gas in the tank in the Jinder versus Brock match. None. And even even Paul Heyman literally cut him down in a promo. Well, but Paul Heyman also cut down a guy that just got engaged in the crowd in a promo. (laughs) Yeah, but he was also speaking the truth when he was saying he doesn't think of Jinder Mahal as a champion. No, I don't. Because nobody thinks of Jinder Mahal as a champion. And this isn't me shitting on the guy. No, it was I like cool. Him. It was cool while it lasted. Uh, I couldn't be more excited that it's not him anymore. And that He's made... just not a big money draw. In this match, for this match specifically on this card when it was Jinder, I wouldn't have even talked about it for five minutes. But now, this is a completely different level now. Uh, I, I'm i so happy AJ's the champion again. And I'm, too. And if the crowd reaction is any indication from Tuesday, he's reached Daniel Bryan level over with the crowd. Maybe I think even, so. Maybe even more so. They went bananas for him <laughs> mm-hmm. when Daniel introduced him. Well, you figure last year when AJ was champ, he was a heel. Yeah. This year, yep. he's a face. It changes the game. Especially, he's the type of heel where he's so good, you can't help but cheer him. Right. But the crowd couldn't wait to cheer for him. Uh, I really hope that this match goes longer than 10 minutes. I think so. Because I really want to see AJ's offense versus Brock. This is probably going to be the best Brock match that we've had since Rollins, Cena, Brock at Royal Rumble a couple of years ago. Okay. I feel like AJ is going to be the guy who pulls everything out of Lesnar. Yeah. And Lesnar is going to love it. I mean, you have to imagine... In the same way that... In the same way Lesnar loved working with Joe, yeah. I have a feeling like he's going to love working with AJ. You, you have to imagine that when he said, I really don't want to work with that gender guy... They said, well, who do you... And he went, AJ. (laughs) You have to imagine that Brock had a say in that. Because it goes back to what you just said about how wanting to see AJ Styles' offense against Brock. Yeah. Because Brock, the last couple times, has wrestled bigger dudes. Mm Mm-hmm. He's wrestled Strowman. He's wrestled Samoa Joe. Yeah. You know, he's wrestled Roman. So now it's time for the four way agility and speed. And we get to watch yeah. that versus Brock. So I'm going to yeah. give you what I think the ending sequence is. Okay. We're, we're maybe 13 minutes into it. Brock's completely gassed as usual. His face is all red. He's sweating like a pig. Um, he hits AJ with, I'll say, the sixth German suplex of the match at that point. Okay. Brock's laying in the center of the ring. He's kind of stumbling to get up because he's because he's gas because AJ's just too fast for him. AJ kind of rolls underneath the ropes and sets up for a phenomenal forearm, and he hits it. And he doesn't go for the pin. He rolls out again because now he's got some momentum, and he goes for another phenomenal forearm. And Brock catches him and F fives him, and it's over. So I have Brock winning. Okay, I like that. Uh, I have Brock winning as well, and I think you make a good point with the F5 because they've really been trying to build that move up as a one-and-done kind of thing. Yeah. Like, he hits it, it's over. And there's nothing cooler than a catch finisher. Yeah. (laughs) So AJ going for a phenomenal forearm can land square on Brock's shoulders. And it's going to be great because Brock is going to fling AJ oh, yeah. <laughs> across the ring when he lands that F5. Yeah. So it's going to be great. I totally predict AJ is going to get a standing ovation from the crowd after. Definitely. I think Lesnar's going to leave. AJ is going to be alone in the ring. The crowd, like the music's going to go down and the crowd's just going to start applauding him. He's going to stand up and then that's going to be the way the show ends. Unless Jinder comes out and attacks him. 
I really hope they don't waste their time doing that on that show. You could do that every night on SmackDown for three months, but let somebody have their moment, you know? Mm -hmm. But yeah, I agree. I, I would love to see, I want I want to see this match. I don't think it's going to be a bad match. I think it's going to be great. AJ Styles doesn't, AJ Styles doesn't have B plus matches. (laughs) It's all a plus matches. He takes no days off. He takes no time off. He never phones it in. You never get a Cena-style AJ match where he's just going through his motions, hits his move, and he's finished. AJ always shows up. He's always present for it. He wants to give everybody as much as he can. He's the best wrestler in the world right now. I agree with that. I don't think I don't even think there's like a number two. AJ's number one. I don't think it I don't even think it's arguable. And you could name your guys that wrestle in Japan because you're a hipster and that's fine. <laughs> it's fine. I hear you. But AJ came to where the big boys play and he proved himself immediately. And he's been the best wrestler in the world since coming to WWE. And he has not relinquished that in the time that he's been there. Period. Preach. So we have a question from a, from a a fan on Facebook. You had posted that we're going to be posting the episode uh, soon. So I'm going to read it off Uh, as Mark bot on Facebook said, I like what WWE did by changing the card. Survivor Series went from being very weak to a must-watch. Do you think WWE changed the card because of pressure, decreased ratings, and low ticket sales? Or was this mostly intentional? Thanks to Mark for the question. And honestly, and I responded, and I think it's kind of both. Uh, they really stacked the card on this one. And I think it's intentional because it's Survivor Series and because it's one of the big four. They needed to get those network subscription numbers up. They, it's also definitely got a lot to do with the attendance. Uh, I mean, how many times have we seen a photo surface online of, oh, well, here's SmackDown. Here's the hard camera side, and it's all taped off. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. like, I also think it's got a lot to do with making things a little less predictable. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't think that they necessarily wanted to change it up so close to the show because any promoter would want time to promote yeah you know but i think that they looked at what they had and they just weren't really happy with it i can imagine there were several meetings where they're looking at this card and they're just going what can we do you know because for a while, I think we both, when we suggested our Survivor Series teams, did we both have AJ on the SmackDown team? Yeah. It was like a no-brainer. But you pull him out, and you put anybody in that spot, and suddenly putting him in as a singles competitor, through the roof already, it's better, you know? So so I really think that they, they just sat down, they looked at that card, and they went, what can we do to make this better? And then you have the potential for surprises with Sammy and Kevin being left off the show and the Jason Jordan thing just happening and the looming threat of Kane. But there's also been rumors and I think it was before the last pay-per-view, but they might also be leading up to that huge raw that's coming in January. So I'm not sure, but there might also be an undertaker appearance. Huh. Because as far as I know from what I read, and you could take it with a grain of salt if you like, that sh- that Raw show in New York in January is going to be massive. They're yeah. simulcasting it from two different arenas in yeah. New York. Um, and I think that show is going to be huge. And I think there's going to be huge returns there. So you might get like a sneak preview of something like that happening because it is survivor series, because they always try to go all out 
for the big four and then phone it in on the rest of them pretty much. So I really think that there's going to be some unpredictable stuff that happens on Survivor Series. That's what they always try to do. Like the one year Sting returned at Survivor Series. First time he was ever, you know what I mean? Like, so there's always a crazy thing that happens at Survivor Series. So I'm yeah. just saying, keep your eyes peeled. Last year was the, was the Goldberg Lesnar yeah. thing. Yeah. And I still think that was one of the coolest things I'd ever seen. Bar none, they got me. You yeah. know what I mean? They got me. It'll, it'll Hook, be line, and sinker. So I'm hoping Survivor Series, you know, pays off because it's got such good promise. Yeah. This is one of the first times that we've done one of these episodes in our yeah. limited run where we're both going, this pay-per-view is going to be awesome. Yeah. There's no way that this isn't a great show. Yeah, definitely. Like, I'm just, I'm ready. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. And and it's another one of those TakeOver Saturday, Survivor Series Sunday raw monday smackdown tuesday gonna be watching wwe for four straight days well with that said yeah man i'm excited we're gonna be live tweeting so make sure you're following yep we're at royally rumbled on twitter Uh, you could also follow us individually on twitter if you're into that sort of thing Uh, i'm at alex shepherd and you you could follow me uh, at Yesball. Make sure you subscribe on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts, the, the Podbean app. And with that, I'm Jordan. I'm Robert. Thanks, guys. Enjoy Survivor Series. Enjoy NXT TakeOver War Games. And go watch a War Games match before you see this. All so right, you understand what you're me. getting. I'm telling you. Jeez. All right. Have a good one, guys. Thanks. Tweet us.